All right, next speaker, Zook here, is going to be talking. So let's please give him a big DEF CON welcome. Come on. Thank you. Uh, hello, and welcome to my talk on ARM exploitation techniques. Thank you, crowd. I love you. Uh, hello, and welcome to my talk on ARM exploitation technique. Uh, Thank you again. <laughs> Can you hear me? You in the back? All right, we got it. Uh, hello, and welcome to my talk on ARM exploitation technique. I actually said it three times now. Uh, in this talk, I will cover exploitation technique on both ARM and x86 architecture uh, from scratch, actually. So if you've never done it before, uh, it's, it's the time to start, actually. Uh, this is my first DEF CON uh, ever. So I'm really excited to be here with you. Uh, it's I'm really I'm really happy to attend this uh, great conversation, this great uh, event. Uh, well, I I had a buddy uh, who had to go uh, yesterday. He couldn't stay today, so I promised him I'll, I'll take a photo of you while you scream DefCon. So if you can do that for me, that'll be awesome. Like five, four, three, two, one. Yeah, uh, I'm going to post it on uh, on that blog right there, so you can see yourself. Uh, I'm Isaac uh, Avram. My my nickname is Zook. Uh, you can call me Zook if you love me. Uh, I work for uh, Samsung. Uh, I'm a researcher there. Uh, I do some neat research for them. I really like it. I'm also a partner at uh, Pia. Pia is a pre-incident assessment. Uh, just a penetration testing, uh, reverse engineering, custom stuff like that. You can follow me on Twitter under that account. It's actually a sticker name. I borrowed the name from. That's the blog. Uh, the, f the full presentation and the paper, which will have like more technical details, uh, will be will be there. Uh, the updated one, not the one in the city. It's it's quite not updated. It hasn't got any Android. Uh, Info. So the updated one is going to be there in a few hours. Uh, for any requests, talks, whatever, dirty offers, uh, that's my email. Feel free. Uh, well, like I said, the presentation is not enough. Uh, you need, if you really want, uh, like, it's nice to know uh, exploitation techniques and stuff. Uh, if you want, like, real more technical details you can see the paper it's on the CD but it's also will be in the website the updated one uh, will be there in that website all right so that's what's going to be actually in this uh, in this talk uh, we're going to start from the very beginning and uh, all right someone just told me to speak louder so everybody can hear me right there all right cool uh, like what's the calling convention why ARM uh, exploitation is different uh, from x86, uh, what we need to adjust in order to make our exploit work from x86 on ARM, uh, some local attacks, remote attacks, and uh, finally a demo on this Android phone. Uh, right, let's do it. So that's the best skills I can get in PowerPoint because all right. If if you don't like it, <laughs> just leave it because I, I can't get any better in in PowerPoint. Uh, anyway, why would someone want to hack a mobile phone or a ARM device or whatever? Let's let's stay on mobile phones. Uh, there's various reasons you want to do that. Uh, one of them is uh, just it's just like a regular computer these days. You can use it for botnets. You can make calls, send SMSs, that's, that's the, someone who wants to attack from remote. Uh, you can just charge him. You can do whatever you want. It's, it's a computer that can make calls. Uh, so that's it. Also, applications are very common these days. So if you download a malicious application for, let's say, a weather, someone that checks weather, uh, and it actually wants to use your Bluetooth or uh, send emails from you and stuff like that, and also it only requests uh, in the manifest, just permissions for the, uh, don't know, nothing, and then he exploits some uh, system APIs to privilege escalation and just use the Bluetooth model or, or your internet or your calls. Uh, someone can steal your calls, 
And there's also the user itself that would want to hack a mobile phone. Uh, it would want to do that to reveal some stuff that the mobile operator didn't allow him to do. Uh, you can see that in iPhones, a lot, a lot of people do that. All right, so after the very beginning, we'll, we'll cover uh, the status of uh, buffer overflows on x86. These days, you can see an x86 many uh, defenses uh, from buffer overflows. It's really hard actually to exploit uh, these days on x86 architecture. Uh, the stack and heap is not executable. Uh, you got stack cookies. Uh, ASLR is very, very, like, most of the places are randomized, very good. Uh, it's really hard to bypass, especially if you got all, all of the vectors. On ARM, uh, it's quite different. Uh, the architecture is different, so you have to adjust stuff. It's not fully working. Also, the stack in the heap, uh, well, they're not executable on most devices these days, uh, but y you can see ASLR uh, most of the time. There is a PAX patch. Uh, for uh, a Linux platform it, a few months ago. So now you, c you can see ASLR being implemented, but it's not mainline yet. So let's cover uh, x86 red to libc attack. I'm just beginning from, from scratch. Uh, if, if you want to exploit uh, stack overflow on ARM architecture, uh, on uh, x86 architecture, it will be something like that. It's very easy to can you see my mouse pointer? All right. It's very easy to exploit. You, you just put the buffer here. Let's say you want to slash pin slash sh to execute. Uh, it's just very easy. You, you put the buffer here. You override the EBP. It doesn't really matter actually because it's, it's, it's good for uh, frame faking and more advanced attacks, but in this case it's not. Uh, you just r override the EIP with the system uh, function address. Uh, you can also put return address and you just push parameter on the stack. So you put your parameter uh, in the payload like that. It's very easy. I think x86 was meant to be hacked. Uh, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> look look at that. You, you just can push parameters through the stack in the same payload. Uh, I think someone up there wanted us to hack the x86 uh, to make it easier somehow. Uh, all right, so for the demo, like I said, we would want to use the system functions. Just we'll execute our command and we want to execute slash pin slash sh. All right, um, it will not work on ARM uh, like that. It, it wasn't meant to be hacker friendly like x86. I, I think that's my opinion. Uh, so, yeah, you know, just don't. Also, why wouldn't it work on ARM? Because if it worked, we wouldn't have this uh, presentation right here. And uh, it's, it has different uh, calling conventions. And uh, it works differently because ARM assembly works differently. And we, we just want to cover that. So we're going to the technical part. Actually, I wanted, when I edited this presentation yesterday, I wanted to add uh, this girl. Uh, I want to do a break before the technical details. Just put girls with tits or something uh, so you can have a break before I'm going to technical details. But I decided to remove it because there are some girls in the crowd. So that's, I'll get killed or something. Uh, all right, so this is the basics of ARM assembly. That's what actually you need to know for this presentation. You can also always become better, that, that one. Uh, the ARM assembly is unlike x86 assembly. In x86, if you want to push parameter, you can do it through the stack. Uh, in ARM, you just need to put it in the registers. So let's say if I wanted to put uh, slash bin sh in, in to push it somehow, I would need to put it on R0, and I can do it through the payload like that. So that's less sucker friendly. Also, there is uh, the registers can be edited. Like uh, PC is similar to EIP; it's the instruction pointer, and uh, you can edit it, it as is, not like uh, x86. You can actually move address to PC, and will be the next instruction. Uh, what you also need to know is, well, R0 to R3 are the most most important 
uh, registers. The rest, R13 is the stack pointer, and uh, LR link register is R14. R15 is, the, like I said, the EIP of ARM. It's PC. So let's start it exploiting. All right. So read to libc overrides the return address and pass parameters to vulnerable function, but we can't pass parameters on the vulnerable function because we need to store it on the R0 register, for instance, in this one. So we're quite screwed, and uh, we can only override existing variables from local function. So it it's usually depends on which function you're uh, has the vulnerability in it. All right, and we can also override the PC, the program counter. So that's what we'll use in order to get control of the full control of the application. So there is no really uh, read to libc attack on ARM. We'll have to make some adjustments. So, all right. Why is it actually possible? So when entering uh, a vulnerable function, the the pushed uh, parameter it's usually it's not most it's not all cases but it's most of them. The R14 is being popped into the PC at the end of the function. So if you can overwrite the R14 uh, at the end of the function, it will be, po be being popped to the PC, the R15. So you get control of the code. If we can control it, we can own it actually. So let's let's do it like a POC with in a in a in a program that is very hacker friendly, all right? It gets the PC, uh, right? It gets the buffer here, and uh, the stack pointer is pointing to the beginning of our buffer. It's very convenient. Our zero is beginning, is pointing to the beginning of the buffer, also very convenient. So let's just put a command here, and uh, after we overwrite the PC, just we'll put there the system address of of the function. So we'll see PS is being uh I'm actually on my screen. All right, it's mirrored. Uh you can see PS uh, function is being executed. Uh but that's that's a lie cuz that's that that's is very convenient uh hacking friendly program that I made specially for that. So that's not a real life scenario. Uh, anyway, uh that that's the POC that it can work. Okay, let's face it. It's not real life scenario. Uh, in order to have that scenario, we need a function that returns void. That after the overflow, nothing happens. Uh, so our zero will not be deleted, and uh, it should be small. It, there's another problem with that. It, the buffer should be small, uh, like 16 bytes, in order to have a free space of the system function, not using the same stack pointer. Uh, space, so it will not override each other. So there is actually n almost no chance in the world for that to happen. And if it happened to you, you're very lucky. It's like winning the jackpot in Wheel of Fortune outside. So yeah, you don't want you don't want that scenario. All right. So what 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 do we need actually for a successful expo exploitation? Uh, we need several stuff, so let's do it. We need parameter adjustments and variable adjustments. Parameter adjustments will be just uh, register adjustments, R0 to R3. We must modify that in order to continue exploiting and do whatever we want. We also would like to get back the control to PC. So after we execute some command, we want still control the, the, the flow of the buffer. And we also might want to do a stack lifting, because like I said, uh, you don't have to count on that the the buffer to be 16 bytes or if it's a longer buffer you're screwed you don't want to do that in the in the 16 bytes you just get uh 4 bytes uh of of buffer that you can execute and that's not enough unless it's a, a local attack so like everybody is just making uh attacking names so we just made a new one because uh, it's i don't know i don't really Put a lot of thought of that, but it's just mix of uh, a lot of stuff. Return oriented programming, return to, right to libc, stack lifting, parameter adjustments, and that's it. I mean, it's not really a name; it's just like a joke. Like everybody in the security community just make up names. So, this for Zook, but don't tell 